We start this video off with a walk around the very beautiful Hobart Botanical Gardens and following that we take a walk along Hobart's waterfront. We take a drive out to Richmond and have a look at Australia's oldest bridge. While we're at Sorrell we take a drive out and have a look at the very pretty Carlton Beach. After moving down onto the peninsula we have a look at some very amazing and spectacular coastal scenery. We spend an amazing day at the historical site of Port Arthur where we learn so much about the convict history. All that and more coming up in this video. I'm Mick and this is Sally. Together we've been caravanning Australia since the 1980s and more recently we started to put the videos together just to show you some of what we see out there. There's a lot to see in Australia and we hope you enjoy what we have here to show you. You can follow us on our trips via the following social media platforms. If you like the following video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Good day everyone and uh, welcome to a new video. And we're still in Jebson and uh, by the time we finish here, we would have been here for eight nights, which is real good. A lot to see in the area around here, and that's why we stayed so long. And uh, later on today, we go into Hobart and have a look at the botanical gardens there, and uh, we might even have a look at the waterfront when we come home on our way home. And then tomorrow, it's just going to be a tidy up day. Wash the car, do a bit of clothes washing and so on. Maybe clean the van inside a bit, who knows? But uh, yeah, just tidy up day tomorrow. And then the following day, we're going to move on, hopefully over to Sorrell, if we can get a spot over there in the camping ground somewhere but we don't know yet until we get there so hopefully things will be in our favor and we'll get a spot so enjoy the video and we'll catch you as the video progresses enjoy it's a reasonably short drive from jeeveson into hobart but with a bit of roadworks that was on the road as we got close into hobart that did extend our traveling time a bit but not to worry we were there and uh, soon to go into, into the botanical gardens as we've traveled around, we've had a look at a lot of botanical gardens and uh, the best time of the, year, of the year to see any botanical gardens, we're not real sure. This one's quite pretty and uh, when we're there today, obviously a bit of blue sky helps, but still very pretty. Um, so if you can tell us which is the best time to perhaps go into the Hobart botanical gardens, leave us a note below. Be very interested to find out what time of the year is the best time to visit. As we were walking up to the conservatory, we were starting to wonder what we were going to find once we entered inside, because at different times of the year, we have seen some very pretty displays inside these sort of buildings. Very pretty once we got inside, and we do wonder if at times whether they have floral displays, as well as the displays that they've got currently got showing at the moment. One question we did ask when we exited the conservatory was these trees here at the doorway reminded us so much of bonsai trees, but do they do bonsai trees as big as this? We're not quite sure. The lawns and the grounds were in pristine condition and it just added to the enjoyment of walking around the botanical gardens. This wooden sculpture, as seen here, is to commemorate the bicentenary of the French involvement with Tasmania. And to understand and appreciate all that involvement and what it was, if you read the plaque here, just stop the video and read it, it will explain it all. With scenes and images like this, you can quite easily understand why events are held in botanical gardens. Sally and I have a bit of a soft spot for Japanese gardens and as we entered into this one and walked up to the uh, waterway here we were quite surprised to see that there was no fish inside the garden in the water. Any other Japanese garden that we'd visited and viewed there was always very large goldfish or what we'd call goldfish swimming around in the water so if you can tell us why there's no fish in this one leave a note in the comments below.
The way in which the water is done and the bridges, a Japanese garden always gives you that feeling of relaxation as you walk around it. The slow turning water wheel here, it gives you the impression that there's no rush in the day at all. As we were walking along enjoying the sunshine, we spotted a duck with its little ducklings and they were on a mission and uh, when we caught up with them, well here's their mission complete. They found this uh, water source here and they were having a swim and a bit of a drink and of course once that was over, it was time to make their way on through the bushes. With the weather and the sunshine still in our favour, we thought we'd take a bit of a stroll along Hobart's waterfront. And uh, very surprising when you look along there, how much money is invested in all the water vessels that's there. As we were making our way along the waterfront, we came up to this uh, block of apartments, I think it was here, and uh, it looked like the timber wasn't finished, but uh, I guess that's the way it's got to look, that's the new appearance, but it just did not look finished off. No doubt this would be a very busy place during the Sydney to uh, Hobart Yacht Race, particularly when the Yacht Race finished here. With today being our last day at Jeeveson, we took the short drive into Hewenville and it was there that we were going to do a bit of washing and uh, that was washing in the way of clothes and washing in the way of the car. Now some might think, oh, you know, we've got a washing machine in the van, why don't we use that? But it's not so much the washing, it's getting everything dry so we could move on. So all the washing of the clothes was done there and why Sally was doing that? Of course I washed the Land Cruiser and made it look clean for a few more days yet. We enjoyed our eight nights at Jeeveston and uh, with it coming in at something like $7.50 a night it was pretty hard to beat but we had to move on so it was time to make our way over to Surreal. There's not much chance of avoiding any city traffic to go to Surreal with the uh, mountains all around Hobart and Tasmania and every other place that we seemed to go. You had no choice but to start, take the major highways and just put up with the traffic as you move through. Ah, good day everyone, and uh, we've made it to Surreal, and uh, we're currently stopping at the Surreal RV stopover campsite, and uh, only here for one night. We're going to go over to Richmond very shortly and have a look at the uh, bridge there, and that's the oldest bridge in Australia, as it turns out. So here for one night, and then we start to make our way down towards Port Arthur. So it'll be uh, as we go down to Port Arthur once we leave here tomorrow morning. Very small campground this one, so if you want to make sure that you're going to uh, be able to get in here, you do need to get here early. And uh, we arrived just before lunch, and uh, we had no issues whatsoever of getting aside. Once we had the caravan set up at uh, Surreal at the campground and had lunch, we made our way over to Richmond, and it was there that we were going to have a look at the oldest bridge in Australia. Like all the locations within Tasmania, it's only a short drive from where you can set up camp to where you're going to venture out and start to do the tourist thing. It was Saturday afternoon when we arrived here at Richmond and we found the town to be a very tourist orientated town and they certainly catered for the tourists very well. We had a number of uh, things on our bucket list that we wanted to have a look at when we come over to Tasmania and one of those being the Richmond Bridge. Now it's quite amazing to think that the bridge was constructed with convict labour between the years 1823 and 1825 and to have the bridge standing now and still being used by traffic today is amazing. Although it does have a 20 tonne limit for vehicles that want to cross it but it's still in service today. After leaving Richmond, we made our way back through to Surreal and from there we continued on until we came down to Carlton Beach. 
It wasn't that far of a drive from Surreal down to Carlton Beach and we had no particular reason why we wanted to come down and have a look at this beach other than the fact that Tasmania's got some very beautiful waterways, uh, beaches and coves and while the sun was shining we thought we'd take an advantage of that and just come down and see what we could find. We weren't disappointed with what we were looking at on the day and it really makes you wonder what it would be like to take a scenic uh, helicopter or aeroplane flight and see a lot of this uh, coastal scenery from high up above. It was our intention only to spend one night here at Sorel but when we woke up the following morning and got ready to leave we looked outside and the, the weather wasn't very nice at all so with that we decided to stay the extra night and then the following morning after that one we were soon leaving Sorel and making our way down to Parker's Beach. It was a very windy drive today but uh, all things going well we were soon here and set up. Uh, good day everyone and we've moved on from Sorel and we finished up spending two nights there. Um, yesterday just wasn't ideal travelling uh, weather so we spent the second day there and uh, We've moved on to a place called Parker's Beach and that's down on the peninsula and uh, from this location it looks like we'll do Port Arthur whilst we set up here so we'll travel out each day and have a look at a lot of, a lot of little areas here that we want to have a look at that uh, appears to be very inviting so we'll take you along with us and hope you enjoy them. The campground that we're now set up in is only a very small one with 10 sites available to campers and uh, I must say that it's probably one of the most difficult uh, times that we've ever had to try and level the caravan. You're either too high at the front or too low at the one side and uh, very uneven ground. But it was ideally located for our time that we we're going to go down to Port Arthur and the associated coastal areas that we're going to view while we're here. On the day that we arrived at Parker's Beach, we made our way over to the Eagle Hawk Neck area and it was there that we were going to have a look at a few lookouts and do some coastal walks. One of the areas that we did have a look at here is an area called the Tessellated Pavement. There's an easy short walk down to the beach area where this pavement area is, although it does have a few steps once you get to the end of the walk just before you access the beach. Now all these lines here that make up the pavement, they're not man-made, it's all natural and uh, to explain how it all works is just beyond me to be honest with you. So I'll leave a link in the video description below and if you go to that link and load that up, it'll explain exactly how all this creation is created. To think that nature has created all these straight lines without human intervention, it's just hard to believe. With Port Arthur to the south of where we are now, we're actually at the place called The Neck and to one side it's got the ocean water and to the other side it's got this uh, inland waterway here. And uh, should convicts escape from Port Arthur, they had to enter this area to get into freedom. So what they did, they stationed 18 of these dogs across this area called The Neck and uh, as most of the prisoners couldn't swim, they had to get past these dogs if they wanted to escape. We're now at a location called the Tasman Arch, but unfortunately it's very difficult to film this one purely because you cannot get far enough away behind. It's where if it was permitted a drone would be good. For this very short walk, it has been listed as being both pram and wheelchair friendly. The coastal scenery along this part of Tasmania is absolutely spectacular and one of the best ways to see it is to take a cruise and see it from out on the water. The area that we're in now is known as the Devil's Kitchen and once again um, because of the closeness and the height the best way to see it would be from a drone but as we're in a national park and drones aren't permitted unfortunately we can't fly it. The 
The next short walk that we we're going to undertake here was one that was going to take us up to Waterfall Bay. Now this is a 1.7 kilometre one-way walk and it's quite an easy walk. Some of it's uphill but uh, not real steep and uh, it's got various lookouts that allow us to look out over these uh, great coastal views as we make our way up to Waterfall Bay. There is a sign here at this lookout warning you that there's a possibility that there may be vessels down below. So in reading that, I'm assuming that the cruise vessels must come in and sail in and around this opening here and take you through the opening. Wouldn't it be awesome to be a part of that? There was no water coming down over the waterfall when we reached it here, only because we were out of season for the water but uh, with such a spectacular coastline to view as we walked along the track, making our way up to where the waterfall normally flows, it certainly makes up for the fact that there's no water there. Once we had returned back to our vehicle, it was only a short drive that took us back to the blowhole and the Fossil Bay lookout. The blowhole wasn't blowing very hard today while we were there and I would assume that that's because the sea was calm and there was no real swell going so obviously we need a much stormier day than what we were having today. It's only a very short walk from the blowhole that takes you up to the Fossil Bay lookout. It's amazing that when that high coastline finishes that we've just been walking along and you come around the corner to this beautiful protected bay here at Eagle Hawk's Neck and it's known as Pirate's Bay. No doubt at times the water in the bay would get fairly rough to look at but certainly for today it's a great picture. Today was our day to go and have a look at Port Arthur and once we left Port Arthur Rather than go back the same way, we continued in a clockwise direction and that way it gave us some different scenery to look at as we returned back to the caravan. It was reasonably early when we arrived at Port Arthur and we had no issues at all finding a car park but uh, later on, on in that afternoon by the time we left there wasn't too many vacant car parks there. Once we'd purchased our tickets it was time to make our way out onto the Port Arthur grounds. When you walk out onto the grounds, the first thing that you're uh, sort of going to see is the old penitentiary that we're looking at now. And when you look around you think, oh, there's not very much here besides the penitentiary, but to uh, someone like Sally and I that we of course hadn't been here before, it's not until you get up on the top side of the penitentiary where we are now that you start to realise how many buildings are here and how big the establishment was. As we walked around these buildings, we very quickly learnt that the convicts that were detained here didn't have a very good life at all. We spent most of our day walking around familiarising ourselves with what was here and uh, it was at that stage that we realised that there are periodically uh, talks and uh, guides will tell you what happens in certain buildings and to partake in some of those talks you would really need to spend at least two days here. There just wasn't enough time to go around and uh, look at everything and listen to those talks. They're allowed to be completed within the one day. As part of the entry fee, if you wish, you can do a harbour cruise and uh, we did the harbour cruise and you go out on the harbour and various points of interest out there with the islands and so on are all explained during a commentary as you cruise around the harbour. The misty rain came in as our harbour cruise was completed and uh, at that point we went and got some lunch from the cafeteria and as soon as we'd finished eating our lunch we came back outside to a nearly clear sky and uh, a little bit of sunshine. 
By the time we'd made our way up through the government gardens, it was nearly all blue sky and it was a beautiful day to be walking around the grounds here. The architectural work in some of the old buildings and the church here is no exception to that. It's certainly great to look at and they must have been uh, an awesome sight to view and to be in back in their day when they were complete with their roof. The building that we're looking at now was referred to as a separate prison and this one is in addition to the main penitentiary. The solitary confinement within this prison wouldn't have been very nice at all and as we go in through these doors here just imagine in real life if this was you going into that uh, solitary confinement and how dark it would be. The prisoners in the separate uh, prison had one hour's exercise out in the exercise yard each day and look how small the yards are. As we walk away from the top section we look back to see the remnants of the old hospital building and then we ponder really at what life would have been like for everyone here. Well we'll end this video here but oh, I want that port half for something special and uh, if ever you get the opportunity to go and have a look, there's so much down there to see and uh, what a life a convict must have had back in them days. But anyway, we move on from here. We're not quite sure where we're going to go. Um, we've got one more day and uh, we're just going to have a relaxation day tomorrow and move on after that. But where we finish up, we're not sure. But we shall catch you in the next video and let you know then. So until then, you take care and look after yourself. If you like the video that you just watched, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of our videos, click on the subscribe button. And once you've done that, change the bell notification to all. That way every time that we do uploads to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified.